What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back again with another video. I couldn't get to this video very early because I was at work all day, but this is another really good signing for the Toronto Maple Leafs and uh, I'll get into why in a little bit here. The Toronto Maple Leafs signed Nick Ritchie to a two-year deal. We're going to get into some details, see where he might fit on this team. You know, it's a little bit confusing now looking at the guys that the Leafs have and, and what they could go with with their roster, but this is a positive move. This is a good signing. Uh, but before we go any further, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you to all the new subscribers and everybody that has been subscribed to this channel. I greatly appreciate the support, everybody watching the videos, but I know there's a lot of people that are watching this right now. They are probably their first time here. I'd appreciate that like and subscribe. It's completely free and there's tons of rumors and Leafs talk on this channel. Again, it would help a lot, but let's get in to this video. Now, this is the press release. The Toronto Maple Leafs announced today that the hockey club has signed forward Nick Ritchie to a two-year contract and the contract carries an average annual value of $2.5 million. Now, there was a lot of people online talking about the fact that he could be getting in the three plus million dollar range. I was like, please stay away from him if it costs you that much. But 2.5 million for the next couple of years is some good security as a guy that can play on your second or third line. Um, I would like to see him on the second line to see what he can do. But I do believe he could be a guy that ends up on the third line if the Leafs really want to go with that power forward type guy on the third line, just throwing a bunch of hits and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool... Uh, numbers here and stuff like that uh, he's an Orangeville native and uh, you know he was saying it was like a dream come true to come to the Toronto Maple Leafs and play for a coach that he's familiar with and no you can't use the Sue Greyhound thing um, because he only played a little bit there I believe he played with the Peterborough Peets for quite some time in the OHL uh, and then he was a, a brief member of the Sue Greyhound so I'm not going to go too much further than that when it comes to him playing in the O I've watched a lot of OHL over the years I wouldn't consider him a Sue Greyhound. But anyways, Nick Ritchie right here, $2.5 million cap hit on cap friendly, as you can see. Now, uh, this guy has gotten a little bit of a raise, which is good for him. He played for the Ducks and, of course, the Bruins this past season. 26 points in 56 games played with a career high in goals. His previous career high was 14. So uh, real good for him to get a chance to you know, come to Toronto and hopefully build upon that, especially playing with some really talented players uh, that the Leafs have, of course. 11 games played in the playoffs this year, four points. Previously, eight, eight games played with one point, but he brings a lot more than just, you know, points. He's supposed to be a guy that's really physical, but these numbers in 56 games played, I'm very happy with. If the Leafs can get 15 goals out of him, that's great. Again, what was the big problem that the Leafs was having down the stretch? They couldn't get depth scoring. In the playoffs, what couldn't they get? Another physical presence if Wayne Simmons wasn't able to do it. Felino was hurt. He couldn't even do it. Simmons is a, or Richie is a big dude. Nick Richie is not a, sh a short guy. I believe he's like six foot four. I need to go look at his, his numbers here. Uh, he's 6'2", six 6'2", two. Six two, 230 pounds. This is not a small guy. But his career numbers look pretty decent. Again, taking a look at it, uh, if he played, if this was going to be played on a full, you know, 82 or 70 plus games, he definitely would have been the 20 goal range. Probably had 35 to 40 points. Uh, very, very good numbers, I would say, for a guy at 2.5 million dollars. Considering the the guys that have been signed have been a little bit ridiculous. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this number. In the past season, the 2020 to 2021 season, <laughs> excuse me, with the Boston Bruins, 56 games played, 102 hits. That was second on the Bruins. First was Connor Clifton. This guy is going to throw the body around. He's going to go out there and hit people. This is what the Leafs need. They need a guy that can still give you 10 to 15 goals, but also can go out there and punch somebody in the face hit somebody, do a little bit of everything. I'm very happy with this signing. I think it's a good number. And again, we're going to get to it in a second, but the way that the Leafs lineup is constructed and how they can use this depth to their advantage. Now, a lot of people are talking about how they're going to be over the salary cap. I do believe a guy like Engvall is going to be traded. Simmons is an extra forward or Mikheyev is going to, could get traded. You know, you could possibly see that. That would open up a little bit more space. You could see Simmons move over. Joshua Hosang also isn't a part of this lineup. You also could move Nick Robertson to the minors. There's a bunch of different things. 
but there's not a lot to hate about this lineup, okay? And I'm not saying that this is what it would officially look like. You've got options now with Bunting, Richie, Robertson coming up, Andre Kasha if he stays healthy, David Kampf if, if he's going to be the defensive centerman uh, on the fourth line. You could put Kerfoot up on that second line. You could move Richie down. You could put Robertson in the minors. There is a ton of options, and don't count out Engvall or Mikheyev. I'm not saying it's a guarantee they get traded. One or both has to get moved. Again, sorry, my chair keeps breaking. I need to get a new one. But anyways, this is... This is something that I wanted to to bring up often because I keep trying to bring this up. The Toronto Maple Leafs made some decent moves in free agency so far. I, it looks like this is probably going to be their their bigger move to go after a guy like Nick Ritchie. I think that they've used their space effectively. Kerfoot still could get traded, but honestly, I think I like their depth more with Kerfoot as a part of the team. But every single time you sign a guy that can play in your second or third line or even be an effective fourth line player, it knocks everybody down a peg, right? It knocks everybody down um, a spot. So Michael Bunting comes in. Okay, you've got a guy that can play the left wing. Then you bring in a guy like Kasha, Hosang, um, Richie, Kampf in the, in the center position. You're, you're consistently knocking guys down. Oh, now we have Engvall, Robertson, Simmons, you know, McKay of all these guys. Like, are they going to be in the lineup consistently? Where's Josh Hosang? If Hosang comes out and has a really, really good start to his camp, where does he fit in? This is all about depth. It's about organizational depth. You can bring guys up. You can make a trade. This is what the Leafs need. Internal competition. They need guys that can fight each other for spots. They're going to be more built for the playoffs if they can find consistency and find depth in their lineup. They need to figure out how to have an effective defensive shutdown line. We've seen teams use it like Montreal where they send out guys to just shut down teams' top lines. David Kampf is a guy that plays really well defensively. Andre Kasha, if he can play, he is going to be a two-way type of forward. I don't know if you use him in that situation, but you could. You could use Kerfoot on a wing in that situation. I don't think people understand the value of Kerfoot. He's actually a really good defensive player. Are you going to send Nick Ritchie out there to throw some hits along with Simmons every once in a while just to scare the crap out of somebody's second line? This is what the Leafs can do. They have guys now that can play effective roles. The Leafs just were throwing together people out there and hoping that it worked. What I hope happens in this offseason and what I do believe is going to happen is now by signing guys like Richie and Bunting and all these guys early, is they're really going to lock down on a lineup and say, this is what we need to go with. Now, there might be a couple guys that are interchangeable. You might see Michael Bunting and Richie be guys that are inter interchangeable. Maybe Kasha, maybe Hosang if he plays his way onto this team. But you're hoping that they find consistency in their lines and run with it. They need to find a way to have a defensive third or fourth line that can go out there and shut down somebody's second line. So that way, the Tavares, Nylander, uh, and whoever line, or the Bunting, Matthews, and Marner line, if that's actually what it, what it comes to be, they can go out there and torch somebody's third or fourth line every once in a while. Can the Leafs find an effective fourth line that is just all speed can they do that with their third line and make the fourth line a defensive line i still like the idea of having spezza with robertson and kerfoot i think that that would be a really effective line to throw out there against teams you know third or fourth line but do i want to see kerfoot on the fourth line no i don't so there's there's a lot to think about there's a lot that could change i don't think that you can simply just look at this lineup and go yeah this is what it's going to be this is what the toronto maple leafs are going to be there's going to be a lot of changes there could be some trades there could be some stuff that we don't expect but for now this is what their depth at least is looking like the blue line kind of stays similar bring up timothy lilligren maybe give him a shot every once in a while goaltenders are going to stay the same with Morazic and campbell this could be interesting this team could still be a very effective team. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to see what they can do. But obviously, we're looking more towards the playoffs. If they can go and make the playoffs, what they can do. So again, they could also add at the deadline. This is this is a very, very early video. We're not even, you know, we're barely into August. Tomorrow is going to be August 1st. 
So uh, we can't judge too much here. So if you are new here, like I said, a like and a subscribe would be very appreciated. And I do love and appreciate you guys as always. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video or stream. Leave your thoughts down below on Nick Ritchie and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Peace.